all right how are you doing he's hoping that all is well with you from wherever you are listening to 89.7 contact fm my name as always is eugene anangwe and this is one on one and as promised earlier on we're going to be looking at an issue that for some it is something that they feel should be kept private but for others it's an issue of speaking out about a minority group that some people might not really understand how to coexist with in the society and that is even why today our cameras are not rolling and my guest today has asked me to just identify him as Mr X welcome to one on one thank you thank you very much Mr Nangwe you represent a minority group that is the gay community in Rwanda and therefore today would love to understand some of the things that you have to go through or being or how it is to be from this community in Rwanda and today i would like you to probably take your time to just take us through some of the things that you go through especially from the initial stages when you discover that you are gay what are those things that probably ran through your mind in the onset or the first step or the first stages of your life when you discover that you are oriented in this direction sexually uh, thank you very much once again <clears throat> let me first be humble and say that i cannot pretend to represent um the gay community mm -hmm. uh because um i have not been um delegated by anybody however uh, people who know me know that I'm uh, knowledgeable <laughs> about um, uh, several aspects of um, the life of the gay men, but also the lesbians, the mm -hmm. bisexuals, mm -hmm. and the transsexuals. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uh, 43 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, I have been very comfortable with my sexual orientation mm -hmm. for uh, 20 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that, uh, like most Rwandans, I discovered myself a bit late. Mm -hmm. uh, I say that I discovered myself a bit late because we have cases of people who mm -hmm. become aware of their sexual orientation uh, even before teenage. Mm -hmm. um, these days, I sometimes hear about cases of kids in primary school who, you know, let's say uh, she's a girl and she knows that she prefers girls mm -hmm. or he's a boy and he knows that he prefers boys. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have been in a case that I would say is very common here in Africa whereby uh, a person grows up feeling that they are asexual, you know, mm -hmm. feeling that maybe I'm a boy but I don't like girls. I don't know why I don't like girls, mm -hmm. but somehow I don't like them. And then uh, at a certain point, you know, you start having these indicators, perceiving these urges in your teenage uh, when you are starting to have um, uh, a capacity for sexual arousal. You start having what in the first stages feels very awkward because it's something that you cannot dare declare mm -hmm. to your entourage. Mm. And then you have to fight uh, with yourself. You know, you have to, to, to have an internal battle up to the point where whereby you realize that there is no point fighting it. That you give in. Yeah, you, you are not killing it, it's in you and there's nothing you're going to do about it. Because the argument has always been, are people born this way? Are they born gay? Or it is something that someone orients you into? For you, do you mm. feel you were born like this? Or someone introduced you to this? One thing is for sure, nobody introduced me. We have cases of young people who are, I will say, uh, induced or lured mm -hmm. into... Uh, people of the same gender, mm -hmm. you know, sex with people of the same gender, uh, but nobody led me in my teenage into sexual contact with men. 
let's come back to the question itself. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that homosexuality is something that people are born with or is it something that comes from nurture? I would say uh, it's a mix of both. But I will also say that uh, uh, it's mostly what you're born with. The reason why I say that it's mostly something that you're born with is that <coughs> of the very people, the very many people I know, and I know quite a number of people, mm. um, uh, here in Rwanda, I've had opportunities to meet probably hundreds or maybe thousands. Uh, I had at some point uh, work that involves uh, sexual minorities yes. in Rwanda. Yes. And I can tell you that uh, the majority mm. are certainly born with it because when they st start trying to fight it, very, very, a very tiny minority Su succeed. manage to fight it for good. Mm -hmm. People will come to a point whereby, let's say, at 28, if they are bisexual, they manage to marry a girl. Or it's a girl, she manages to marry a man. And by that, she feels victorious. But it's a short victory. It's a, it's a victory of a few years, 10 years, 20 years, and then it will resurface again. Or they start doing it secretly. Or they start doing it secretly, or mm. they manage to keep control, to keep a lead on it, but for 10 years, 20 years, and then in the 40s, in the 50s, they can't deprive themselves anymore mm. of what they had longs for. Two things. In the initial stage of this discussion, you said that you're in your 40s and you're proud of your sexual orientation. You're proud to be gay. Mm -hmm. But someone out there listening to us today, from the history of this show, they know that we always record the show, we always put it out there, they would see that you're contradicting what you're saying. Then they would be like, why then? Don't you want to be filmed? Why wouldn't you walk out there and just say, I'm okay being like this? I think from, uh, you know, uh, how many minutes? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure that I use the word proud. Mm -hmm. I think that the word proud is something that should be used for something that one strives for mm -hmm. in order to obtain. Mm -hmm. And as I said, uh, I don't think people uh, fight to get it. Um, I don't think people fight to turn uh, uh, lesbian or gay. I think it's something they find themselves with. Mm -hmm. So that, that thing that saying that people can be proud to me is uncalled for because you know, one should be proud to earn a degree because you have to go there and sit the exams and earn it. Mm -hmm. um, one should be proud to to become a billionaire because you've started from, let's say, 500,000 and you've seen it growing. Mm -hmm. You know how much sweat you put in it, so you can be proud of it. But I think in case, in the case of sexual orientation, I think we should not be talking about pride I think we shall be uh, talking about uh, coming to terms with uh, our uh, sexual orientations. I think we should be talking about uh, um, you know coming to 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 peace with yourself. We should be talking about uh, becoming comfortable with who we are. If we start uh, saying that you are proud, then very soon we'll start going out there and luring uh, young ladies or young men into a sexual orientation, which they may actually not be mm. uh, uh, um, born inclined to. Uh, so I can't say that I'm proud, but I'm definitely not ashamed. Uh, and for that, uh, I have um, collaborated with government ins institutions in the past with international organizations in the past um, in order to work for the well-being of uh, lesbians, gay mm. men mm. in mm. this country. Mm. Mm. But then, 
when you say then you've already put aside the the, the, the term proud or pride mm -hmm. and and then we've now picked a, an, another one or you've now clarified and said not ashamed mm -hmm. and this brings me to the question of if you say you're not ashamed how because because the point i'm leading to is trying to understand how it is like mm -hmm. being gay in rwanda yes are you able to mingle with your friends are you able to mingle with your colleagues in the office mm -hmm. are you able to mingle with your family members and mm -hmm. without being ashamed mm -hmm. let them know your sexual orientation in, is that the reality in my case in i have been fortunate mm -hmm. to be able actually to live with uh, so many friends hundreds okay maybe if i say hundreds maybe some of them are acquaintances but uh, you know, I have uh, dozens of friends uh, who know about my sexual orientation. Uh, we can throw about a joke about it. I can uh, uh, pour my um, uh, miseries onto them when I'm going through a rough time with a relationship. Mm -hmm. I've had the good luck of having uh, some members of my family who uh, became aware of my sexual orientation and who had to cut to accept it mm -hmm. uh, I think the level of harmony that a lesbian person or a gay man can have with his family and society depends on how he conducts himself in other aspects of life I know lawyers doctors businessmen who are gay who are lesbians you know in the case of the bisexuals it's a little bit more complicated you know, and in some cases, their families. No lawyers, doctors, here in Rwanda. Here in Rwanda, who are gay. Yes, but their sexual orientation remains a guarded secret. No, 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 no. I'm telling you that you know, <coughs> some of them. I know a few who are in good harmony with their families. I know a few others who have got you know, long, you know, protracted arguments mm -hmm. with their families about it. But I know a few who are at peace with their families. Mm -hmm. In the first stages, it has been, you know, rough ride, it has been complicated, but, you know, the, the, the family adjusted and the gay man or the lesbian adjusted, they came to uh, a level of harmony. Mm -hmm. uh, in most cases, uh, there's a reason why I say I'm fortunate, uh, in most cases, the families, uh, the colleagues, uh, the environment is not psychologically or intellectually equipped to understand mm -hmm. uh, 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 the life mm -hmm. of um, uh, mm -hmm. a gay man. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, you know, you end up having people who are separated from their families for life, mm -hmm. I will say. But then why, why is it that you feel unsafe, probably not just you, mm -hmm. but a majority of those who are sexually inclined in this way. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel unsafe, especially being in a country yeah. where there is no legal framework that says we have mm -hmm. banned or outlawed homosexuality or lesbianism? Actually, why I do you feel unsafe? I feel a high level of safety, but in some context. Okay. As I said, I collaborated with the Ministry of Health, for instance, with the Parliament, with some international organizations, some branches of the UN here, and most of the people who work there are Rwandans. Uh, I still interact with them, and I know that they are intellectually and psychologically equipped to understand that. Clearly, people in the health sector are most of the times equipped to understand uh, things about uh, uh, sexual activity, sexual orientation. So you would not be able to deal with the community in the rural area in the same way you'd be able to deal with people from the ministry and these NGOs? Yes. Would you be able to deal with the people in the local, uh, in the villages? If, if we were to speak about the rights mm -hmm. of the gay in mm -hmm. the villages, would you be able to deal with mm. with this situation, would you be able to have a conversation mm -hmm. with the people in the village in the same way you'd have? I will not be able to deal with them because I know that intellectually they are not equipped. Uh, the the program mm -hmm. that I'm going to, uh, um, you know, the uh, what I'm going to say today mm -hmm. uh, may sound a little bit too academic for some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So I know that mm -hmm. when I interact with people, I need to know who they are mm -hmm. and how much uh, um, intellectual uh, mm -hmm. luggage uh, they have mm -hmm. uh, in order to understand what I, uh, I say. Yes. Uh, so in the same way, you know, uh, that's why I requested that um, uh, the cameras be switched off because that because I know that your audience is not selected. Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, one of uh, the advices that I've been give, giving to governmental institutions is that uh, um, uh, when dealing with sexual minorities, since we know that it's minority mm -hmm. and that the forces of the majority are going to be very strong and sometimes unmanageable, mm. I've been advising that when dealing with communication with the general public, there has to be scrutiny. It has to be carefully filtered in order to ensure that we don't create a confrontational society. All right. The harmony that I'm talking about is knowing how to avoid confrontation. With, I believe with different that we have freedom of opinion. Yes. So, you know, somebody in a rural area or somebody in a town but who is uh, decided or who can't come to terms with uh, um, homosexuality cannot be forced to, to tolerate to accept, it. To tolerate it. Yeah. And, and, so and that's, exact, that's exactly the point because, mm -hmm. which brings me to the question of when you look at the way today the system is in mm -hmm. terms of the, the, the legal framework, mm -hmm. um, in, in other countries, we saw battles in Uganda, for example, mm -hmm. where we had the section that wanted gays and lesbianism be completely outlawed. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the Rwandan context, it's, it's, the law is sort of cold on this. I mean, mm -hmm. it, there is no, you know, it, it is not illegal. Mm -hmm. And also, you wouldn't see anybody saying, let's walk out in the streets and just... Prof profess mm -hmm. our, 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 our sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. Would you want a situation where there is a clear-cut line mm -hmm. saying that it is legal or not illegal? I would you want that situation? I would say uh, when it comes to sexual interaction, I think it should remain a private matter. Mm -hmm. I think in the same way that there is no law saying that heterosexuality should be legal. Mm -hmm. I think there should be no law saying that homosexuality should be illegal. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, there is no law in this. There is no law in this world that says that heterosexuality is legal because it's a given it, and it's something that happens in private spaces. Mm -hmm. So I think that should remain a, a private matter mm -hmm. between consenting people. And uh, the regulation should enter into the picture only when there are aspects of uh, lack of consent mm -hmm. between uh, the protagonist uh, into any kind of sexual activity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I would say let's have a country where private matters remain private. Remain private. But still, as we want mm -hmm. that, you have situations where you need certain services and probably someone already knows your sexual orientation mm -hmm. and probably don't agree to that. For example, you earlier said that we have doctors, we have lawyers, mm -hmm. and probably let's, let's delve into the issues of health, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. And there you are, you get into this hospital ward mm -hmm. where you have patients who probably are not inclined to your direction, mm -hmm. or a doctor who's not inclined to your direction, mm -hmm. or even that doctor is gay himself, mm -hmm. and you have a patient who discovers or knows that this person is openly gay, mm -hmm. how does that affect your well-being, especially in accessing some of these services indeed, like help? Indeed, you are touching a very good point. Even though we went a little bit quick, mm -hmm. uh, first I wanted maybe to talk about, you know, uh, the way people uh, just start of time. feeling, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. because of time we mm -hmm. have to. But yes, we are touching on a very important su uh, uh, point, subject, uh, because it's a subject 
that shows how Rwanda is special as a country. Mm -hmm. You know, Rwanda is an exception on so many, many aspects. Yes. And on this aspect, again, Rwanda has shown itself to be uh, uh, unique in Africa in the sense that uh, when the policy makers realized that um, uh, homosexuality needs to remain a private matter, but on the other hand, um, uh, the policy makers acknowledged and continue to acknowledge that uh, uh, some aspects uh, of life need to be taken care of, that the state has got duties towards its citizens without discrimination. And the state has decided to uh, um, consider the health of the lesbians, of the gay men, of the bisexuals, by opening doors to uh, uh, operators who want to provide services uh, um, and equipment uh, for good health for the lesbians and gay men and bisexuals. I'm hereby talking of the, the, um, the willingness that mm -hmm. the state has shown mm -hmm in a strategic uh, plan uh, towards HIV control. Mm -hmm. From back in the day in 2008 and 2009, whereby the government decided to include uh, uh, in its HIV prevention programs the men who have sex with men and the lesbians. Mm -hmm. uh, so I say this country is special this country is looking into the matter of the, the, the public health of the um, lesbians and gay people. And uh, also, um, the country has opened doors for operators in matters of human rights and civil protection for the lesbians and gay people. Mm -hmm. So, so today as we speak then, mm -hmm. what are those things that are very tough for you mm -hmm. and, 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 and people of like minds or the same sexual orientation as yours? Mm -hmm. Today as we speak, what are those painful moments that you go through in the society that you say that these are the wishes that we have in our wish list? Mm -hmm. That if these happened, then we would feel incorporated and as part of a society that is seeking to build a nation for a common mm -hmm. goal. What are those things? I will say, odd enough, that in the case of Rwanda, there is no wish list. Mm -hmm. uh, um, as I said, I've interacted with so many lesbians and gay men in this country, and there is no uh, um, clear wish list because uh, the, the measures taken by the government, mm -hmm. the state, have ensured actually that the lesbians and gay men don't have something that they have to wish for. Mm -hmm. If you are in Africa and you have a state that doesn't criminalize homosexuality, mm -hmm. uh, what else do you wish the government to do? The government is not going to bring you sexual partners anyway, mm -hmm. in the same way that it doesn't provide sexual partners for heterosexuals. Mm -hmm. If you are in a country whereby the government has already worked hand in hand with some uh, clinics, public hospitals, and uh, public health organizations in order to supply uh, uh, counseling, advice, uh, um, safe sex equipment to the gays and lesbians of the country. Mm -hmm. What can then a gay man or a lesbian wish Want, for? Wish for. Yeah. So, so, so in other words, we're, what we're looking into is a situation where if anybody was to talk about gays, mm -hmm. why is it that most of the time it's always about the thoughts of the sexual activity? Why is it always about that? So we'd love to understand from your point of view, where you're seated, mm -hmm. what is it about being gay? Okay. Uh, let me maybe try and be a little bit academic. Yes. Uh, how much time have we got left? So Good. That sort of three minutes. Three minutes. Yes. Uh, um, you know, when we are talking about homosexuality, we need to understand what gender is, and then we understand what sexual 
and gender identity is, mm -hmm. and then we go to uh, sexual orientation. As we don't have much time, I will say that the reason why there is this impression that lesbians and gay men are mostly focusing on the sexual activity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is because as they don't get to interact much with the rest of society, they don't get to air actually the other aspects. What is that other aspect? You have a the chance other not to talk about that. is like the aspect of, uh, um, um, of uh, finding love, mm -hmm. of uh, 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 you know, finding affection, because it's something that has not been addressed in public. Uh, so far, like here in Rwanda, no artist has come out and composed a song or a poem uh, talking about love itself, would, it, would it be feeling. listened to? Would it be listened to? Would it be? Would it have airplay? Do you think? It, looking at the it, society it today, will, it will not have. Would airplay. it sell? Mm. Would, it will not sell. Yes, again, that's what, that's a very good point um, uh, from you. Thank you. It will not sell because an artist is supposed to be selling to the largest audience possible, who happen to be heterosexuals. Mm -hmm. So the, the artists, the, the gay artists in Rwanda, because we have a few, you know, are busy composing songs about, you know, heter heterosexual love mm -hmm. while they are gay. Mm -hmm. It's because they are in the business of making money. They are not in the business of offering solace to the other lesbians and gay men of this country. Uh, so that's why there is this impression that when you talk about homosexuality, you are talking about sex sexuality mostly, but before sexuality there has to be feelings, mm -hmm. have, there have to be emotions, yes. there has to be affection, yes. and uh, you know, there are not mm. opportunities mm -hmm. um, for people to express, mm. Mm, there are no opportunities for gay people to express their feelings and to be listened to. We have other cultures, you know, mm. Chinese cultures, uh, Arabic cultures, mm -hmm that have in the past mm. that have in the past had uh, poets uh, singers for instance who have written or composed songs about homosexuality yes and, and, and they right. haven't had that so so those are things that you're looking forward to you'd wish to see such things happen it will be best because it will allow young gay men and young lesbians to come to terms with with themselves um, without much effort. I've known people who have been fighting with their sexual orientation for 10 years, for 15 years. I think that if people get to know that before we consider the sexual aspect, that there is love and that it's okay to love a person of the same gender, you know, and people get to see that such, you know, works of art celebrate that mm -hmm. some people will come to terms with their sexual orientations. orientation because because it's very important because in closing also that we get to have a situation where societies blend mm -hmm. and 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 also work towards a common goal mm -hmm. without any sort of discrimination of where i come from or what my sexual orientation is mm -hmm. but the reality on the ground is once your friend realizes your sexual orientation, that you're gay, that you're a lesbian, there's always a sort of perception that they now have about you mm -hmm. and you risk sometimes losing this friendship mm -hmm. or sometimes even this job. Mm -hmm. So do you see a situation in the near future where this will be a thing of the past, where you will work hand in hand with, a f with your fellow countrymen for a single goal of achieving mm -hmm. Vision 2020 without them looking or thinking about your sexual orientation? I'm actually quite optimistic but that is for Rwanda. I'm mm -hmm. quite optimistic that if uh, the, the policy makers continue to have this approach on the issue of sexual minorities, mm -hmm. Rwanda will be a special country whereby uh, people of the sexual minorities are in harmony with society. I will say that mm -hmm. in Rwanda, uh, there is a little bit more harmony, for instance, than in Uganda or Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we have, s I've heard so many cases of people who have been aggressed uh, uh, in Uganda, in Tanzania, for instance, and I know that here in Rwanda there is less aggression.
towards uh, homosexuality. So I know that if things go just this way, in terms of you know policy about uh, uh, inclusion of vulnerable populations, because this government has been very special and very emphatic about it. Mm -hmm. This government has been very supportive of vulnerable populations, the women, the... the then the you feel that things will be fine. We'll, we'll achieve that. Yes. But then, solidarity is also something that when we see in other countries some things happening to minority groups, for example, mm -hmm. in, in Tanzania today we have, we have albinos, mm -hmm. uh, you know, most of them being targeted and killed uh, mm -hmm. for, 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 for different reasons, including sorcery and witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And in Uganda we had that situation, and you mentioned as an example, why didn't we see different groups from different countries, especially from the East African, mm -hmm. standing with their brothers and sisters on this? Why? In, where were you? In Uganda. Yes, in the case of Uganda. Well, um, I know that Rwandan activists um, uh, contributed and supported uh, uh, Ugandan activists. There is a fact that uh, Rwandan activists uh, haven't had so much clout because mm -hmm. the country is smaller and they, have, they haven't had to fight uh, um, uh, fatal uh, battles like in Uganda, so the activists here you know, were not able to provide much support, but mm -hmm. they provided the little support they had, and I think that uh, um, first the Ugandans themselves need to realize that they don't need to discriminate against their own brothers and sisters, yes, uh, and then you know. Rwandans uh, will come in. Okay. I think that if Rwandans become very vocal in Uganda, then Ugandans will have the impression that Rwanda is promoting homosexuality in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that will be good for diplomatic relations between Rwanda and Uganda. I don't think that Ugandans generally will perceive Rwandans as, as, um, as, as good brothers uh, and sisters. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. X, for your thoughts and insights on this issue. I'll just quickly glance uh, at some of the comments that we've been receiving. Henrietta Mush <laughs> on Twitter, and she has said that uh, props for inviting a clearly intelligent and older man and not the typical stereotype, live and let live. That's the hashtag she's using. And also she says, he's well-spoken, that's for sure. It's a pity they always feel unsafe. And I think you touched on that uh, for a moment. We had Emmanuel Camonio who was asking, I think everyone should be proud of who he is. Discrimination, stigma, inclusion, those are the hashtags uh, that uh, he used. Of course, Habimana Christian also had asked earlier uh, and, and, and asked me to ask you if you're proud of being gay, which I think you, you definitely touched on that. Uh, clear, clearly separating the issue of pride versus, uh, you know, being uh, Comfort. comfortable uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to be who you are and, and being inclined in that direction. So, Mr. Exile, thank you so much for your time. Thank you once again for accepting to come on the program. And we definitely have no more time at this particular moment, but I'm sure we'll keep in touch on these and more issues. Indeed. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you very for much for giving me space okay. to communicate with Rwanda. Asante. And there you have it. One on one comes to an end. Most anticipated and long awaited show. There you have it. And of course, we have more guests just like this and even better. Keep the conversation going. Use the hashtag 101RW. Follow us on Twitter at 101RW. And let's stay in touch. Goodbye for now. My name is Eugene Anangwe.